Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The main question is how big are Brad Friedel's balls? Also, it's predictions time. And he regs UK. All things revolution from a UK perspective. Hello everybody, I'm Mike and welcome back to the Any Revs UK podcast, all things revolution from a UK perspective. Now this is coming fresh off the, I don't know what it's called, fresh off the newsreel. At the time of recording this, we have just announced two pretty big things in terms of news coming out of the revolution camp. We'll start with the smaller one of the two, and that is that we have signed respectfully. Dewan Jones obviously was on kind of trial with us from the MLS Super Draft picking him up and uh, I think rightfully we've offered him a contract look very very good in pre-season especially in that last game setting up the Casado goal as well and uh, yeah just a really good option I don't know I'm hoping he'll be uh, you know a player who features a little bit more than what we'd seen from uh, Segbo last season but it's uh, really good to see us get that deal over the line and not really hesitate for too much longer and I'll be uh, hopefully seeing a few minutes from him this season. Other big huge news coming out of the camp is the official announcement that the NU Revs have got their own hashtag with a little Crayola logo beside it. Massive news coming out of the club. Um, so obviously I'm sure you'll all agree. Right, so prediction time guys this is what it's all about i asked quite a fair few people 13 people in total have took part in my little survey that i was doing about predictions for the revolution upcoming 2019 season uh, so i'm going to go, go through some of my findings from that and then obviously also give my own opinion based on the questions that i asked them as well and i'm actually going to remove one so i did ask a few people for their um breakdown of kind of what you know what i thought would get in terms of wins, uh, losses and draws, but I realise that's a bit, you know, a bit too hard. I mean, people like to filter through. I mean, quite a few people did it, but not everyone did it. So I'm kind of going to, unfortunately, uh, not take that one as, uh, and I'm not going to do it myself either because it just took, t- took me too long to try and figure out. But the main questions I asked her were just predictions on the position will finish in the East, top goal scorer, top assists, best defensive unit, uh, sign, best signing so far as of the 23rd of February when I sent out the questions the formation that I think they'll play this season and also their starting 11 for the game against Dallas now this is all going to kind of prefix this by the fact that this is all done before the announcement of uh, Andrew Farrell's injury and also the injury to uh, um, JFC as well so you know quite a few people would have put them in their 11 when I sent this out so we'll keep that in mind as well but in terms of uh, finishing positions, now we actually only had three options. Um, we know we had seventh, sixth, and fifth. They're, they're the kind of places that people thought were going to finish. And I've seen the MLS review this morning as well, and it's got us uh, most people down as tenth, eleventh, uh, or twelfth. Uh, with the only person actually putting us higher than that was with Charlie Davies, who put us in in sixth. Um, obviously, you know, he might be slightly biased, but. Um, I just want want to give a quick shout out to all the people that actually got involved in the uh, little kind of prediction thing I set up. So that was uh, Randy, um, somebody called uh, Political Debates, they got involved as well. Uh, Sarah, Mike, Alex, Mohammed, Joseph, Kaya, Julia, uh, K, K Burke, 54, Rush, Sean Sweeney and uh, Matt as well. So obviously massive thank you to you guys for for getting involved and putting your predictions in. And I said I'll be kind of running through my findings. As I said, positional based, there was only sixth, uh, seventh, sixth, and fifth got it. So um, in seventh, uh, we had four people going for that. Sixth position seems to be the most popular. We had six, six people opting for that. And uh, three people put us in the lofty heights of fifth. I'm, I'm saying that we'll sneak into seventh position and it'll come down to the last game of the season potentially on goal difference um i'm gonna, gonna call it there because i'm not 100 sure we'll we'll get there but if it is i think it's gonna be very very close 
to us sneaking in. Uh, goal scorers, we had uh, four people chosen. Christian Pinea, Teal Bunbury, JFC and Diego as well. Uh, Pinea won outright with nine votes. Then Teal Bunbury with one, JFC with two and uh, Diego with one. Assists, we just had the two people up for the assists. Uh, it swung very heavily in favour of one person. Uh, Carlos Hill getting 12 votes and just Diego grabbing the one vote from that one. I honestly thought it would be a little bit more even between those two, but uh, we're expecting big things from our DP uh, signing, Carlos Hill. Uh, defensive unit, we actually had one not applicable. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, we had Mancien with seven, uh, Luis Casado with two, uh, Tony with one, and Castillo with two as well. So a lot of people expecting, uh, again, a lot from our... Uh, I think he's currently a TAM signing, but I'm not too sure if he's going to be switching over to a, a DP signing in Michael Manzi and there. Pre-season, I don't know. There's still a lot of work to be done between uh, him and Delamere, but uh, hopefully he is the man for the, the job. Top signing so far, uh, in terms of obviously what we've seen. I mean, 12 people, uh, sorry, 11 people went for Colos Hill, um, which, you know, is a little bit, I suppose, in, in terms of signings, We've not really seen anything from the two kind of big ones. Uh, JFC got one vote as well. Not really seen much from him. Obviously, he's picked up an injury, which was thankfully they kind of come out and told us what it was because a lot of us were getting really worried that Brad just wasn't seeing enough from him in training. Well, that definitely was my feeling anyway. So I was kind of glad to see that the fact that they come out and now said it was because he was injured. That's why he wasn't, which, which is good. I'd rather that happen than it's just not being, you know, good enough to actually make the eleven. And then we've got one also for uh, for for um, Renix as well. Formation wise, we actually had uh, five formations picked. So we had four two three one, four one four one, four one three two, four five one, and four one two one two. Which, to be fair, are all variations of each other. If we're perfectly honest. Uh, but we had six people going for four two three one, which is the formation we we played most of last season. The formation we've kind of tinkered around with a little bit in preseason. The four one four one came in second place with three. Then it was the four one three two formation with two votes. Then four five one and four one two one two, uh, both with one vote as well. Now in terms of lineups here, this one took some working out. So I've done it. I've done it on percentage of people that picked. Uh, but what we'll go through now. Basically from the Kind of, we'll go with the four, uh, two, three, one formation as that's what we played last season. It's kind of what people are expecting. The lineup would go. If this is from people just picking their starting lineup in terms of the percentages of people that picked it. We'll go with Matt Turner starting in goal with forty six percent of the vote. Andrew Farrell would have started at right back with sixty nine percent of the, the vote, and then the, the other three people just one hundred percent. So we've got Michael Mantien, Delamere, and Castillo all on one hundred percent picks for everyone. We then had Luis Casado as the first defensive midfielder with 84% of the vote. Uh, and then it was a choice, it's a, basically a coin flip between Calderwell and Zahibo, both of them picking up 38%. In front of them, the three is pretty much chosen. We've got Diego on the right, uh, Gil on the central of the three, and then Christian Pinilla all picking up 100%. And up top, we had Teal Bunbury with 53%. Other players that obviously picked up percentages as well. Cody Cropper picked up 23% of the goalkeeper votes. And uh, Brad Knighton picked up 7% of the votes. Uh, we then defensive other players. Brandon Bayer picked up 23% as a right back as well. Uh, we also had Wagadello as a striker at 23%. And oh, sorry, it was actually a tie between Bunbury and JFC for the starting role up front. Uh, I actually thought it would have been Teal and Agadello, but it wasn't. JFC got 53% as well. And uh, the only other players we mentioned were Buchanan and Renick. So there's some players that just didn't get mentioned at all. So no one thinks, you know, the likes of Ankin's going to get picked. Buchanan and Renick are in there, so that was good to see. Uh, but Annie Barbar's not getting the start. Uh, Somi, I was surprised by that one. I thought a lot of people, no, honestly, I didn't think Somi was going to get picked, and rightfully so at the moment. Um, but yeah, quite a few people there which weren't picked. Uh, as I said, in terms of defensive midfielders, it just seemed that it's got a bit of a flip of a coin between if he's going to start with Calderwell and Zahibo. If we do start in that 2 3, two, three 4 2 3 1 formation. But uh, yeah, some interesting finds there. A lot of people still sticking with Matt Turner and in goal. 
there. Forty six percent of the votes going to him. So uh, yeah, but I think a lot of people are kind of settled with their with their eleven. I suppose you'd say. We have also got my predictions now as well. So as I said, I told you that um, I think we're going to finish seventh, just about scraping in by the skin of our teeth on goal difference, or maybe last game of the season we win or the team loses or draws or whatever, and it's it's based on that one decision. Uh, goal scorer, um, I'm actually going to throw my hat on this one and, and go completely left wing to what everyone else has gone with, and I'm actually going to go with Wagadello. Uh, it probably will be Christian Pinier, I'm going to be perfectly honest, but I think Juan is going to get a run in the team this season up top, and uh, I think he's going to make the most of it. I don't know what it is, I've just got a feeling he's going to make the most of it, and he's, he's just going to start popping in the goals. He'll go on a good run of form. It'll be then hard to dislodge him. Hopefully at some point we'll play with two up top as well, so it'll be him and, and uh, other Casado, and they can really start forming a, a formidable partnership up top. But... Um, yeah, I've, I've just got a feeling what it's going to be one season this season. don't know what it is. Assist-wise, I think it's going to be Diego again. So I'm going to go against the ground in this one. 12 out of 13 people last uh, in the predictions. So it's going to be Carlos Hill. I think Diego's going to top him as well. I think it's going to be close. But I think it's going to be maybe one or two between them, to, them two. But hopefully they'll be both getting really good numbers in terms of assists. Uh, defensively, I think it's going to be Castillo this season. I think, he, again, he's going to be up there with the assists. I think he's going to be hopefully flying down that left wing and, and going on the overlap from Christian Pena. What I'm actually hoping to see from them two is that it'll actually, because Christian obviously likes to kind of drift in uh, back into his right hand, uh, onto his right foot. Hopefully with him doing that, he might be coming a little bit more narrow, which gives the option that, that when... Um, Pena does cut in to go on his right foot. He's still got the option of Castillo out on that left-hand side if he does wish to play it back out, which could lead to him to crossing the ball and, uh, and assist from that. But, yeah, I think he'll be he'll be big for us this season. Signing, I'm going to go with the one person that said Justin Rennix as well. I think he's going to be huge for us this season. Uh, just seeing him, bits from him in pre-season. Uh, I think Carlos Hill will be, will be good. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting a little bit too much from him in his first season in MLS. I think we've got to find, especially the first few games, kind of to find what level he's at. We've not really seen much of him in pre-season. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh, for me to say, definitely for sure, I've been more actually impressed with Renix and Buchanan than I have actually with, with uh, anything I've seen from Carlos Hill. He's, he's shown good bits on the ball, but I've just not seen enough of him and enough minutes of him on the pitch, for sure. Uh, Formation-wise, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. I do. I do think we are probably going to go with the four-two-three-one that we played last season. I can't see him deviating. We've played a little bit with the four-one-four-one formation in pre-season. One, we got demolished, which we won't really talk about anymore. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a tough one. But I do think he's just going to go with it because it's tried and tested, and it kind of with the players we've got and how you know weak defensively we did look, especially if he's he's going to be adamant about the wing backs pushing on. That we can't really just play that one holding midfielder. So I'm going to go for the 4 2 3 1 formation. In terms of my starting 11 for the first game of the season against Dallas, I'm going to start with Cody Cropper in goal. I'm um, going against the 46% uh, of you that, so that Matt Turner was starting goal. I don't know what it is. I just think he's going to go with Cody Cropper. Uh, I do think Matt is our guy for the season, but I do think it's going to be Cody's to lose. Um, I just don't know what it is. I've, I've just got a, sl a slight feeling that it's going to be. Proper to start in, in the first game of the season. Uh, back four, obviously with the news that Andrew Farrell has uh, potentially not going to start. Uh, I think he's going to have to go with Brandon Byer right back because purely we just don't really have another main option there. I mean, is can Ali Barbar play there? I don't, I've not seen him play there. I'm not too sure. I suppose he could go with him, but he likes Brandon Bayer. And to be fair, I like Brandon Bayer as well. Just not as a defender. I think he's definitely more someone who we should be trying on that right-hand wing uh, and working on his crossing from there. But I do think he will start with him because he likes him. He's our only other real option at right back. And if Andrew Farrell doesn't pass the fitness test, it's definitely going to be him. Uh, Mancia and Delamaya and then Castillo as our defensive players. Uh, Casado in front of him with Zahibo. I think it'll be Zahibo getting a nod because I was very impressed with his performance in the last preseason game of the uh, the the preseason. Um, then in front of him, I think it's the, the chosen three that most people have gone with. 
Um, I do think it will be uh, Diego out on the right hand side, Christian Pini on the left, Colosio as the attacking midfield number 10 spot. And I do think he's going to start, although I've said I think it's going to be Juan Agadelo as our top goal scorer. I do think he will start with Teal Bunbury as he is our most informed striker going into the season, which is not the best feeling in the world. Um, and, you know, just behind him, I mean, Brian Wright then as well. Two goals from Brian Wright. So, yeah, not ideal. Uh, we're going to put on this. The preseasons from the fact that we've not really had much of our two key players for this season. You know, I just loved uh, JFC to get on the score sheet and, and score back a few goals. And and uh, we need to see more from Carlos Hill, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, so, not ideal preparations. I think the preseason went okay, to be fair. Definitely could have been worse. Um, I think it's good that we've learned a lot from the preseason. That dribbling against Orlando, as I said, as bad as it was, it was good that it kind of happened then and we kind of didn't go into the season with that tactic and formation and, and, and mentality and, and got absolutely annihilated by Dallas because that would have been the worst possible start. All of the haters would have come out then and sort of going, oh, well, we told you New Revolution suck. No, you suck. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was okay. I think it's, as I said, a lot of, Things could have went slightly better um, in terms of a few performances. I think we could have, uh, you know, basically just shown we just conceded too many goals. I mean, I think we conceded in every game, didn't we? Did we concede in every game? Um, it felt like we conceded in every game, which is not a good thing to have. It, even if we didn't score that many, um, if we were just not conceded in those games, it would have put me in a little bit more of a, a better mindset going into this this season but it was it was still a lot of positives to take away i mean the, the youngsters for me were, were the, the shining standout moments of the preseason, and i think that kind of leads us nicely into the next segment of just how big are brad friedel's balls that's kind of what we want to know now for me i don't think he's got the balls to actually put the youngsters in day one i would love if i'm perfectly honest if i'm going to be honest here my lineup would be for the first game of the season. I would love to see uh, either Turner or, or Cropper in goal. To be fair, I don't think Knighton's got the nod for me. Either one of those two, I'm not really too fussed which one we pick. Uh, preferably w would be Turner, which I don't think he's had number one going forward, but either one I'd be happy with at the moment. Uh, then Andrew Farrell, because he's our best option at the moment, right back. Dana Meyer, Mancien Castillo, Luis Casado, Zahibo. Buchanan, Renix, Pania, and uh, Wanagadello at the top. That's what I'd like to see. That's what I'd like to see. Is it going to happen? Depends on how big Brad's balls are. Because for me, it's hard to drop your DP player from the first game of the season. Because we've just signed him to a big contract, paid money for him. But on the flip side of that, I kind of mentioned it, I think, for, for like the very first episode I ever did of these about the whole Lee Wynn situation. The whole, the whole thing of Brad coming in and, and, and saying, you know, it's kind of what you do for me in, in training and in pre-season. For me, Buchanan and Renix have got to start then. If, if you're a man of your word and you're sitting there with a big cojones, use them. Play the yak lads who performed in pre-season. Play Buchanan, play Renix. It's, it's going to be a massive call if he starts Carlos here on the bench. But for me, has he done enough in pre-season? No, he has not. He has not impressed me any more than Renix or Buchanan. Or, or maybe even Jones has got a, a shout in at some point because, well, it's fair, you know, he's only the two games. So maybe that's a bit far-fetched. But if, if you're saying it's based on what you're seeing now, not on what the name is on the back of the shirt or anything other than that. You you play those. You play those two, two youngsters and uh, prove to us that you that you know what you're saying is true. It's not about the name of the player or what they did for you last season. It's what they're doing now in pre season and in training for you. But will he do it? I don't think he will. But if he does. If he does and it backfires, then you know, then I feel like it's one hundred percent my fault for uh, Brad Friedel. Obviously, listens to this podcast. Brad Friedel's number one favorite podcast of the year, as voted for by 
but by me. Um, but yeah, it you know, if he does do it and and we get drubbed, then you know, then we, at least we tried it. But um, I don't think we will though. I don't think we will. I don't think having those two on the pitch that far off would lead to anything worse than than Diego and. And that's, to, to be fair, that's not saying Diego's had a bad preseason. I think Diego has looked really good, to be fair. And I, and I really hope. I'm looking for, for, for me this season, what I want to see. I want to see the youngsters getting minutes. There's a few key things I want to see. First one is the youngsters actually getting minutes, all of them. All That's Firmino, Haravo. Um, I want to see Joe. I want to see them all getting minutes. This season, you know, two or three games under their belt, even if it's just the um, Open Cup. I want to see them getting minutes for the, for the club. Second of all, I think this is going to be a huge season for Juan and Diego. One for Juan getting minutes in in as a, as a striker, but both of them have got to perform. They've both got to start performing now consistently. That is the main key because Diego, to be fair, he had a, he had a pretty he had an okay season last last year, but it's consistency. That's what the big thing is for me. He's got to start hitting some consistency now in a team and doing it week in week out and proving to us. And what's good about this, and, and if we do get another DP signing, which doesn't look like it's going to happen, uh, but if we do, and it's someone of, of that nature, I mean, he's, he's going to be looking now and thinking, you know, he's got Rennick, Buchanan Jones can play there, Carlos Hill can play there as well, Diego, Juan. He's got some competition for his shirt this season. So hopefully we will start seeing the best of Diego Fungungas. Um, and I realise I pretty much say his name wrong every single time I uh, ever say his name. But um, yeah, not really too sure. But again, this is one of those that I wrote. I actually wrote some notes down that was just percentages and stuff, and the findings from the actual little survey thing that I put out. Other than that, this one has just been free. Um, but I think that's uh, that's pretty much it today. I've tried. I do try and keep these as short as I can. I realise that half an hour sometimes is a little bit too long to be listening to one man talk. So I do try and keep them at 20, 25 minutes if I can. Um, and I'm just checking now just to see if there's been any news as I'm recording this so I can bring you some live uh, <clears throat> live news and it's just all about the bloody hashtag and a little pun war I've started on Twitter as well it's all about the announcement of the, the hashtag so other than that I mean obviously I'm not going to really talk about the Robert Kraft stuff because I don't really know enough about it and I don't really want to say anything uh, when I haven't done research in behind that but obviously it's not looking good from that point of view of reports that have been coming out around the club um, but we, we try and stay positive here at, at the only revs uk we try and keep us as uh, positive as we can i know i have a rant every now and again but i do try and even off the back of that still remain positive and take some positives away from the rant even you know six two i even managed to find some positives out of that so which you know i mean i suppose there was two goals wasn't there but uh that pretty much wraps up today's uh episode guys of uh I'm en I'm enjoying these things. I mean, you know, as I said, I mentioned, and I think I mentioned it a little bit too late sometimes in the in the episode. So I don't know how many people get that far this far into the episode. But uh, there is a comment section down below on on YouTube. If you could start using it, that would be absolutely awesome. Start just talking to each other, even if you know I will respond anyway. But even just responding to other people's comments as well, and just start getting a little bit of conversation going in there. The the comment section because one, it's just nice because you know talking to other people and getting your your opinions, opinions out there and two it actually really really helps the channel as does subscribing as does liking the video that all helps the metrics and analytics that go behind it to push me up so when people start searching new england revolutions on youtube they start finding my stuff first because at the moment i don't think you find any of my stuff um but you know with the, the help of you guys um liking and commenting it will help them know that people are watching this content and uh, they're enjoying it and it's good content for them to promote um but yeah that's uh pretty much as i've said about 17 times now wrapping it up for today's episode if you've got any thoughts on anything i've said then please as i said make sure you comment down below in that com comment section if you have enjoyed today's episode then obviously make sure you drop a like share subscribe follow all that kind of good stuff and i will catch you guys next week for the next one Any Rex UK. Yeah.